All right, it's time for another eBay unboxing, and it's another holy relic. Let's get going. We'll do it in fast motion. By the way, this took a hiatus, and I'll tell you all about it. I thought I was not going to get it. All right, so for the unveiling, and this comes with its original monstrance, really cool. And let's get in there close if we can. And we have, oh, can we zoom? Let's see. We have St. Raymond, I believe a Pena Fort. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. We'll do a story about St. Raymond. Now, this is sil uh, silver going around the Theca. It's like a coin silver. It could be cleaned. And somebody put cotton inside this. I could take this out. And I want to see if it has the stamp. Now, some people are getting angry at me in uh, my previous video showing these, these relics. They're saying I should donate this to the Catholic Church. But I spent thousands on them. And I'm still paying off my credit card for them. So I can't. I can't afford to do that. So if you write in the comments, you know, not to be disrespectful or anything. But, you know, it's not a nice thing for you to buy this. Well, guess what? If I didn't, somebody else on eBay would buy it. It could get into the wrong hands. It could get into a Satanist uh, Satanist's, uh, or black magic type of person's hands. At, or Santa Teria practitioner. And uh, seriously, I'm saving these from getting into the wrong hands. Now, you might say, well, that's selfish. How could you hoard all these saints? Um, no, I'm not doing that. So here's what my plan is. I spoke to already my local parish priest, and I'm loaning these out to him. So he's going to actually, he's very excited about this. I sent him photos. And so I'm taking these to the local parish. We're going to be meeting next week. And we're going to come up with a night that we can bless people with these holy relics, possibly cure and heal people. Also, I spoke to another parish priest uh, from a local near me. And in August, we're going to be putting all these things out for the parishioners to venerate and for him to bless the parishioners with these. So I'm going to have these going on a traveling tour. Basically, let me just put this down. A traveling tour across New York, uh, especially in the New York City area. Let me just uh, lower my camera stand so you can see this better. In the New York City area. And uh, so the church is going to uh, benefit from this. So I don't see what I'm doing as wrong. A lot of you may come on my video and think that I'm being an absolute jerk. Or I'm not doing things the proper way. Or I'm not being nice. I am. Because, like I said, I can't give these away to the priests or bishops or you know, Catholic, uh, whoever is in, in the churches, I can't get this stuff for free. Because if I did, I'd lose thousands of dollars. And you might think that's greedy, but I'm not wealthy. If I was wealthy, I'd probably, yeah, totally donate all of these. So since the fact that I am going to be loaning these out, any time amount of times they need, yeah, I'm going to, like, if they need it 10 times in a year to bless sick people or to do some kind of um, thing with them, no problem. I'll even drive it there and drive it back home. So, yeah, they're actually going to be on permanent loan to my local Catholic parishes along New York City and the Long Island area, Nassau and Suffolk. So if you're a priest and you're seeing this video, you can contact me. Go on my main page. There'll be a link to Etsy. You can contact me through Etsy by clicking on that in the contacts through Etsy. And I will be more than glad if you're less than 100 miles away from me, more than glad to travel it, travel all these pieces down to your local parish. So let's find out about St. Raymond. But before we do, I want to see if this has the seal of authenticity. Most of these would have came with a certificate. The certificates just like go lost. And we're going to see if it has the wheel. Now somebody, the wheel, the um, stamp or the wax seal. Somebody said to me, you are not to tamper with these. I'm not tampering with them. When you take the little backs off them, it's not tampering with the relic, especially if it's authentic. It'll have strings in the wax tied to the back of the relic. And the only way opening it is by cutting the string. So I'm not tampering. Again, please, I understand that a lot of you get angry at this, but um, I'm not, you know, tampering is what I'm saying. All right, so here he is, St. Raymond, and hes I put blue. I put blue in there. They had a white piece of cardboard in there, stuffed with cotton. I put the original cotton behind the blue because I didn't want to take it out because it had church oil on it. It smelled like church oil. It does have the seal that was not tampered with. So we do have an official relic of St. Raymond. First class, by the way. Now, I don't want to be redundant. Why are my dogs growling at each other? 
They sound like demons in the next room. Cut it out before I exercise you. Okay. And so uh, I don't want to be redundant. So if you already watched my Relic videos, I will have to tell you again for the newbies. So I apologize to the oldies. So basically, first class and second class and third class Relics. This is a first class. It's the best class. We always know first class, even on the airlines, is the best class. First class, it's a piece of the body of a saint. So it could be a piece of hair, a piece of scalp, an eyeball, a fingernail, a toe, a piece of the skin, a piece of their heart, a piece of their brain, a piece of their bone. In this case, it's a flesh. It's a flesh one. Um, that little dot on there is of the body. First class. Second class is something they touched in life or wore, like a veil or a pair of shoes, slippers, socks, a belt, a ring, Anything they basically touched or wore in life. First, uh, third class, third class. So basically, I would take this third class relic, by the way. It has uh, the, the soil from the catacombs in Rome. And I would touch it to this. Let's go ahead and do this. To this first class. And say it wasn't third class. It was just a regular crucifix. Now it becomes it becomes a, a a third class. It's a third class relic now. It already was. So let's find another one that is not. Here we go. All right. And uh, we have this beautiful, beautiful, lovely, gorgeous Italian micro mosaic uh, crucifix. And it is no class. <laughs> and let's go ahead and make it first class. And now, no, third class. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. It's a third class relic uh, crucifix now. There we go. And we do have St. Therese, the little flower in this one, first class relic. Don't know if you can see that. That's the bone right in the center. Really, really cool stuff here. All right, so please don't blast me in the comments that I'm doing terrible, horrible, no good, very bad things. Um, seriously, take your judgment and bring it somewhere else because I am bringing these to my local church to have them venerate it uh, amongst the parishioners to bless them. I'm putting these out on loan. They're definitely going out on loan shortly. I'm in uh, cahoots with two different Catholic priests at two different uh, churches in my local area already. That They're very interested in having these out and blessing people with them. So I'm not selfishly, you know, hoarding, okay? They'll be uh, loaned out as many times as needed. Let's talk about St. Raymond and a fact that I thought was the coolest thing about this priest. And uh, let's go ahead and segue over. Okay, don't know how true this is, but apparently St. Raymond, right here, by the way, uh, sailed on the ocean with his cloak and his staff uh, was fashioned into a sailboat. It's, I don't know if it's a true story, boys and girls, but there appears to be witnesses. And let's find out. We'll go watch the story of St. Raymond if you're not too bored. Today's saint took full advantage of the opportunities his long life presented him. Born around 1175 into the Spanish nobility, Raymond of Hanyafort started out with a good, solid education. By age 20, he was teaching philosophy. A decade later, he had earned doctorates in both church and civil law. In his early 40s, he joined the Dominicans. Less than a decade later, Raymond was called by Pope Gregory IX to serve as his confessor. Raymond also organized a collection of church law. At age 60, Raymond was appointed an archbishop, but within two years, he had resigned in the hopes of getting some peace. The Dominicans then elected him to be their superior. Raymond gave the post his all, working hard, visiting all of his fellow Dominicans on foot, reorganizing their constitutions. In his last 35 years, he worked to oppose heresy and to convert the Moors in Spain. He also encouraged Thomas Aquinas in his writings. Raymond of Peñafort finally retired in 1275, his 100th year. Quick take on the amazing Saint Raymond of Peñafort, who, upon being held against his will on the island of Majorca by a stubbornly sinful King James of Aragon, said, Oh yeah? Then bowed his head in prayer, and calmly spread his cloak upon the water. And tying one corner of his cloak to his staff, and making the sign of the cross over the makeshift craft, he fearlessly stepped on and sailed upon it across the Mediterranean Sea to Barcelona, a distance of 132 miles. It's recorded that it took him six hours to make the trip. 
and it's a recorded historic event. There's reportedly a tower and chapel on the site of his landing on the shore. Can you imagine it? If you were to charter a boat today from Mallorca to Barcelona, Google sources estimate an eight-hour journey in a boat with a motor. But note, St. Raymond, no boat, no motor. God blowing the sail of his cloak and keeping him afloat. On receiving the report of his escape and his safe landing in Barcelona, King James I, in shock and humiliation, repented, changed his ways, and became an ally of St. Raymond, constituting a greater miracle than the cloak boat, considering the ways of kings throughout history. I want you guys to write in the comments below, do you really believe that St. Raymond actually turned his cloak into a sailboat? And did that really happen, even though there claims to be witnesses, sailors that saw him and were egging him on, that uh, they were cheering for him to actually, because they were told by the king not to assist him in any way. Uh, so write in the comments, one, if you think it's true, or two, if you don't think it's true. And again, if you have a judgment to place upon me for having these, please stop and, and just hit the back button. And uh, I'd appreciate it if you kept your judgment to yourself. I appreciate it because these will be loaned to the Catholic Church as many times as they need it. I will have these go on tour and be um, given basically the blessings to thousands of people. As much as I can spread these across New York, I will be doing it if you are a priest or um, someone from the Catholic Church, you can contact me by going on my main panel uh, channel page. I believe um, about, and you, you'll see like the links for Etsy. You can contact me through Etsy. I do not give out my email address. That's personal. And you can contact me. And again, if it's under like 100 miles from Nassau County, Long Island, I will probably bring this to, over to you and have you venerate it and bless people with it. Thanks for watching and for personal people as well. If you need a blessing or a healing, um, I can arrange for a priest to bring this uh, to your home. If you know who's some uh, somebody who's sick and dying or very ill or very depressed or lonely or sad, I will, in, if you're in the area, I will arrange for a priest to come to your house with one of these relics of your choice or all of them. And uh, you can enjoy it as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys all soon on the next one.